Hello everyone, this is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. In this video, I am going to share with you a very interesting project which I just stumbled upon. The project is called as Deep Claude. It is a blend of Deep Seek and Anthropics Claude. Deep Claude is a high performance LLM inference API that combines Deep Seek R1's chain of thought reasoning capabilities with Anthropic Cloud's creative and code generation prowess. It provides a unified interface for leveraging the strengths of both models while maintaining complete control over your API keys and data. In this video, we are going to install it and then we will see how it works. As I said, it uses both DeepSeek R1 and Anthropics Cloud, so you would need API keys from both. For DeepSeek, you can go to DeepSeek's website, which is DeepSeek.com. And then for Anthropic, you can go to Anthropic.com. Both are paid options. So let's get started and let me install it here. Before that, let me give a huge shout out to our very good friends at Mast Compute who are sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you're looking to rent a GPU on very affordable prices, I will drop the link to their website in video description. Plus, I'm also going to give you a coupon code of 50% discount on range of GPUs. This is my Ubuntu system and this is my GPU card NVIDIA RTX 6000 with 48 GB of VRAM. Let me create a virtual environment. And by the way, you don't really need a GPU for this video because we would be using API based models here. Now, while it creates this virtual environment let's talk a bit more about this deep cloud deep cloud offers zero latency because it gives instant responses with r1's chain of thought followed by cloud's response in a single stream and both of them are powered by a high performance rust api we are also going to install rust and cargo shortly it is quite secure and all of your keys remain local and your data also stays private so I'm not sure uh, if it sends the data to DeepSeek or Anthropic. That is not really clear here. So do your own due diligence. It is quite configurable. You can play around with a lot of parameters. Also, the good thing is that the code is open source. You can contribute, you can modify, and you can deploy as you wish. So for me, the main attraction is around R1 and Claude. And the reason which they have gov given on their uh, report and I will drop the link to it in video description is that deep sea carbon's chain of thought trace demonstrates deep reasoning to the point of an LLM experiencing metacognition, correcting itself, thinking about edge cases and performing quasi Monte Carlo research in natural language. But according to this, that R1 lacks in code generation, which I don't think so is the case. And that is why they are using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I don't think so that R1 lacks in code generation. We have tested it out in various videos in the last one week or so. And we have found that R1's coding capabilities are also quite good. They are equivalent to what we see in Anthropics Claude, if not better. So for me, I think this is just an experimental thing where you can use both models together to see how they work. So that's a quick intro. Let's try to uh, go to my terminal and see what is happening. Let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are iGent Bot. iGent Bot lets you effortlessly deploy a personalized knowledge bot across platforms like Discord, Slack, and others. It is ideal for open source tech communities and startups that provide user support. And I will drop the link to their website in video's description. Okay, so that is done. Let's go to my terminal. And now here, let's git clone the repo of this deep cloud and we have entered into it. And now let me install the rest for you. In order to install rest, first you need to download and then run this shell script with it. And we'll just say select one here. We want standard installation. It is going to download and install it. So let's wait for it. Should not take too long. Almost there. And there you go. And then we just have to run this in order to set it in our environment. So that should be done. Let me quickly check if it can show me the version. There you go. So Cargo is installed. Make sure you are using the recent version of Cargo. Uh, should be, I believe, over 1.75, something like that. But 
I have just installed the latest one and I would highly recommend that you do uh, that too. Okay, so cargo is installed, everything is good. We are in the root of the repo and here all you need to do is to just build this project with cargo. And once you run it, it is going to uh, build all of these components. So let's wait for it. That is going to take a couple of minutes or so. Now let me set both of these environment variable, which are the keys to deep seek and anthropic in the environment and clear my screen. And then you can start the deep cloud server like this. And it has started the server on our local host at port 1337. So our deep cloud server is running in another terminal window while letting that server running in the separate terminal. Let's um, do a client call to that server. And for that, let me show you a code. So I already have to set my API keys for both deep seek and anthropic cloud, as you can see here. So first up, we are importing the request and OS, and then we are getting that environment variable, checking it. And then this is where we are accessing that endpoint locally on port 1337. We are setting both API keys, and then we are creating that JSON payload for the model, where I am asking it to implement a C++ program that solves and queen problems using backtracking and all that stuff. So let's see how both uh, deep six R1 and Anthropic Cloud go about this. So I'll just minimize this. I'll go here and then I'm going to run. I already have saved it as app.py. It's a Python code. I'm just going to call it like that app.py. It is running, taking a bit of a time. Hopefully it won't be throttled. And as you can see, it is it has started processing the request as a post method, but taking long time, I can tell you. It is also really uh, making me bit worried about my API bill. Anyway, I will let it run to see what happens. Both are expensive, by the way. And there you go. So it has finished processing, took long time, as you can see, but at last it has come back. So four minutes. Wow. So if I go here and show you the response, the response looks quite good and it is on all JSON format. You can use it programmatically. So you see it is thinking and then this is R1 style. Once it has thought, then it has taken, given it to Anthropics Cloud, which has produced the later code. Interesting. You see it is still going in. Pretty interesting. This is a code which has been published by Anthropic. Very interesting. So I would say pretty interesting. So if you like R1's chain of thought and you want to create a sort of prompt for your Anthropic Cloud model because you love Anthropic Cloud um, for the coding skills, which are quite good, no doubt about that, then you might consider using it. Um, this tool, I would say. But if uh, for me, I think. Uh, as far as I have tested, R1 is sufficient enough and uh, I believe it is quite capable of generating quite a complex code. Anyway, let me know your thoughts if you would be using it, if you are heavily into the code generation through Anthropics Cloud and you also like R1, would you be using uh, both of them together or not? Very, very keen to know. And as a parting, I just checked my um, API cost it has cost me around 70 cents for just one prompt if I combine both of the IPA calls. So pretty expensive, I would say. So that is a one big no-no for me in terms of cost. Other than that, very interesting project. No doubt about that. That's it. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps. Thank you for watching.